Growing in Christ, 40 days to deeper faith, day 25, time to clear the temple. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple court and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves, and they would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he told them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. Mark chapter 11, verses 15 to 17. Jesus exposes the heart of the religious leaders. The Lord is back in Jerusalem and decides to visit the temple. He makes the long trek up a series of crowded walkways and the staircases that pass through tunnels and eventually open to a massive outer courtyard, the one called the Court of the Gentiles. Before Jesus came to earth, King Herod the Great had expanded the temple, enclosing this area with colonnades and designated it as a place of prayers and worship for Gentiles or non-Jews. And through the years, people from other lands have gravitated here. While the entire 35-acre complex is considered holy, it becomes increasingly more sacred as visitors move farther into the temple from east to west. Yet, non-Jews are strictly forbidden to go beyond the court of the Gentiles. Warning signs in Greek and Latin are placed in everywhere. Their penalty for setting foot in the inner chamber, death. The Romans have permitted the Jewish authorities to carry out executions for this offense, even if the offender is a Roman citizen. So Jesus decided to visit this popular spot, but one glimpse and the Lord remaces. His heart breaks by what it be has become under the high priest Sapphias. The courtiers is mobbed with people buying and selling animals, cattle, foals, sheep, all for sacrifice at high prices because it is cartel. Vendors are changing common currency for the coinage in which offerings have to be made, the shekel, which is another monopoly. These merchants make up to 1,800%. Only someone blind and deaf can pray in this bedlam. It looks like more a hectic bazaar controlled by an unscrupulous, self-serving man, not a sanctuary that honors God. So, in the very place that is a symbolic center of the nation, Jesus single-handedly drives out those who are selling animals for sacrifice and overturns quite violently the tables of the money changers. He evacuates the vendors who sell doves, stampedes the livestock out of the courtyard, and temporarily shuts down operations. And then Jesus sits down calmly and begins to teach a stunned audience about God's holy temple. It is to be a house of prayer for all nations. Mark 11:7. It is the light of the nations, the place to which all people will come to acknowledge God. Isaiah 56, 7, 8. It is a place of holiness, humility, honesty, truth, and sincere repentance before God, not a den of robbers, not a place that can be manipulated by religious phonies. Mark 11:17. It is Jesus' body as the Son of God. He is the temple. John 2, 21-22. Let's explore together the word from Mark chapter 11, verses 12 to 33. Until now, Jesus had clashed mainly with the lay leaders of Judaism, the Pharisees and teachers of the law. But now he had challenged the chief priests, whose families probably owned the businesses Jesus had just shut down. Let's turn once again to insight from biblical scholar Craig G. Bartholomew, PhD, regarding today's passage. 
when we see Jesus cleansing of the temple in this context, as he is in the temple, it becomes clear why the Jewish leaders begin to look for a way to kill him. Not only is the challenging their treasured hopes and aspirations and announcing the destruction of their most cherished symbol, he also is doing these things in the name of the Lord, their God. He is acting if he is God's chosen Messiah. Though the Pharisees, Sadducees, and others who veer to lead Israel can agree or nothing else, they do agree that this man, Jesus, threatened their whole way of life with his claim of the coming kingdom. This man has to go. After the house cleaning, people began grilling Jesus about who he thought he was. Pulling off the stunt, he did call it for some pretty high authority. If he was claiming to be the Christ, then he had better get to it and make his point by impressing everyone with a few miracles. But God wouldn't be bullied. He will never be manipulated. Jesus' miracles are for loving, healing, and encouraging. They are never meant to entertain the curious. So instead of putting on a sideshow, the Lord prophesied about his upcoming resurrection. But as was usually the case with the spiritual truths, the people missed the boat. They thought he was talking about an immediate, literal interpretation. You claim you can rebuild our temple. In how many days? They didn't expect his deeper, change all the rules, eternal truth. In three days, I'll raise this temple, my body, from the dead to prove I'm telling the truth about myself. I'll be doing this to demonstrate a purer, more powerful form of worship, a worship in which God will no longer be living inside a temple but will actually be living inside of people. Never forget who Jesus is, the righteous God. One day, every one of us will stand in his presence and give an account for our lives. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 Author John G. Mitchell makes this connection with Jesus' actions in the temple and how it applies in our lives today. Jesus cleansed the temple when men sinned and made it unclean. Similarly, the Lord has a right to cleanse us when we sin. It is much better for us to willingly confess our sins so that He may forgive and cleanse us. And He is willing and ready to do just that. How wonderful it is to know that the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. See 1 John chapter 1, verse 10. Work it out. Based on today's lesson, tell in your own words what the temple merchants, as well as the chief priest, did that made Jesus upset. How does this relate to your life? and the life of your church community. Be holy as Christ is holy. Holiness. It is one of those words that brings to mind a long list of rigid, narrow-minded rules that are out of touch with reality, not to mention completely out of reach. Yet consider this. Scripture says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 At times, our lives stray far away from anything that remotely resembles holiness. And the truth is, no one is born holy. So, what's a weak, imperfect Christian to do? Turn to Christ for help. Take a look at the message says, Here it is, in a nutshell, just as one person did it wrong and got us into all this trouble with one sin and death, another person did it right and got us out of it. 
but more than just getting us out of trouble, He got us into life. Romans chapter 5 verses 18-19 Ask yourself, what does it mean to be holy? How can we live our holiness in practical ways? Please share your comments below. And now, let's pray together. Lord, help me to have a pure heart before you and to honor you with my body, with my life, with my actions and words. I ask you, Lord, please cleanse me, my thoughts, my motives, and my emotions. I surrender wholly myself and my life to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.